Good day again, class. This is now the third series of our lecture in Module 6. And I hope that uh, you have reviewed the, the first and the second uh, series about things that we that I put across as reminders and also as point of emphasis in this uh, particular module. Now, uh, today, we'll uh, start with a continuation of what we have discussed in, uh, in this module. This is series three already, now uh, on the introduction to the economics of information, or actually economics of information or information economics, though it, this is just an introduction. This is not all there is to it also, no? because information economics is actually one semester course. Now, the, the information is the economics of information or information economics is, uh, the, as I said, the most active part of microeconomics today, considering that there are a lot of uh, imperfections in the market, uh, may not be due to the for example, workings of the players in the market, but actually these are structural and informational constraints that makes the market imperfect. And there are a lot of uh, sources by which the market could fail in terms of uh, clearing what is beneficial to both players, the consumer and the, the seller. No? So today, Let's continue with what we have discussed last time. We know already that, uh, uh, in, uh, for example, in in the in this information economics that we have discussed, we uh, we have discussed in series two that uh, very important uh, tool of analysis is mean variance analysis. Now, because uh, in in the case of imperfect information or asymmetric information. Uh, it creates what? It creates uncertainty in the market. Now, uncertainty in terms of how consumers behave or decides, and also uncertainty how the firm also decides and makes decision in terms of purchase of inputs. So we have discussed the the essentiality or the importance of using the mean and variance analysis by coming up with the expected value of a random variable like profit, sales, income, price, etc. No? Uh, expected value which is actually our surrogate value for our X bar or mean. And then that is also uh, uh, will estimate the, the average uh, payoff over time. And then that is the payoff value or the, the benefits. Now we need to look at also how this streams of benefits also is uh, behaving through time in terms of what are the uncontrollable factors considering that there is an uncertain situation in the market so that we need uh, we need our we need for uh, it very important for us to understand the the importance of understanding the variance of the variance because the variance will now be used to factor in risk into our analysis it might be a uh, risk that is uh, high risk, or it could be low risk or medium risk. It depends on the risk bearing attitude of the decision maker. May it be consumer or may it be the manager of the firm or something like that. So we have I've given you several examples of uh, uh, uncertainty with respect to consumers and uncertainty with respect to the, the firm. You know? How do a risk averse consumer and a risk averse business manager can can act on certain uh, uncertain or uncertainty or can react or can deal with uncertainties in the market okay so that today we will uh, continue with our example in uncertainties of the firm with uh, and the firm which is uh, giving us as, as a review there are two options no project a and project b expanding the market and uh, uh, b a and b and also a joint investment no, between A and B. And then there is also a sure, a, a, a sure uh, say for example, uh, investment, which is 
uh, putting up your money in, in the treasury bill. But there is also a, the uncertainty there that is uh, uh, going to happen, that is the bust and the boom. No? The boom here will be more favorable in the market and the bust is going to, when the market is down, and there are probabilities or likelihood of occurrence. Now, there is a 90% uh, chance of economic boom and only 10% chance of recession. Now, when it is a recession or bust time, it's going to create a loss on some on some projects and a gain, but uh, but a gain on some projects in terms of uh, economic boom. So, as we have said, in cases like this, in 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 in, in situations like this, we are faced with what which project to pursue. Very importantly, the final decision depends on the risk bearing attitude of the manager or the decision maker. But then again, it's whether you are risk uh, risk lover risk taker or risk uh, neutral or <clears throat> risk averse very importantly before approaching the final decision we need to what we need to document we need to document the whole say scenario so that we can systematically understand the problem just like this we make a matrix and then uh, uh, encode or uh, plug all the values there and we see uh, need to compute for the mean or the ex expected value and the standard deviation, which is uh, the, our value for our, the square root of our variance, okay? So the standard deviation is going to put a, a normalized value of our, our uh, variance, which is also an expression of risk. So what should the manager do? So simplifying or computing everything, computing the expected value and computing the square root of the variance, we have this table completed or computed. Okay, so that one, we see the different values. Now, which project should the manager pursue given this particular result? Now, it says here, note that the manager will have several options depending on his risk-bearing attitude. Now, if you are a risk-averse, that means to say, segurista uh, ka. You don't, you don't want any risk. You want to have a sure thing for your money. So. You, uh, you uh, put up your money or deposit your money in the treasury bill so that you have a fixed interest within within, partic within a particular period of time. So that means to say you have zero risk and you have a sure thing, which is 3,000. Okay. Now that is the, I know, that is the, the, the rational decision for a risk-averse manager. Okay. For a risk, for example, risk-taker manager, Resgado, Sugarol, or something like that. So he wants to put up his money where the risk is high. Wherever there is high risk, he wants to put the money there because he knows that with high risk, there's also high return. Okay? So he, if you are a risk uh, taker, manager, or risk lover, you, you want to put up your money in option B. Okay? Where you get a, uh, a an expected value of 17,000, but uh, risk of like eighteen thousand. In case of uh, in case of uh, flap, you will have that particular uh, say. For example, loss. Now, if for example uh, you are a risk neutral, a risk neutral manager really also takes into account the expected value of the of the proposed investment and making sure that the expected value of that, regardless of risk. The expected value is higher than the sure thing, which is 3,000. So he will invest on both options, joint investment, wherein he gets an expected value of 9,000, 9, or it could be 9,400. And then the risk uh, of 1,800, it's kind of minimal, but it can be disastrous if he's not able to manage that. But a risk neutral manager would always have, would always make sure that he needs to, he has a strategy to avoid or to uh, minimize, if not avoid, the risk in that particular in, in that particular venture. So it will be for a risk neutral manager to invest on both options. For a risk taker manager, he will invest on, uh, say, option B. So that is how the decision making has to be done. Okay, now. Again, in uncertainty of the firm, many managers are risk averse. Okay? Many managers are risk, risk averse.
generally owners of the firm or stockholders who want a manager to behave in a risk-neutral manner. Okay? Dagang kayong mga manager nga mga talawan. Mga sigura, panigurado lang ba? Hadlok, hadlokan. But a logical firm, a uh, dynamic firm, and a firm that is really vibrant and active would like to have their manager as risk neutral. Dili look of risk. A manager who is risk neutral cares only about the expected value of a risky project. Expected value, I'll put it a risky project, but the only thing is that he has a strategy, he has a very convincing strategy in order to manage, if not avoid the risk. Now, if you can go for that, that is a very dynamic and productive manager. And that should be the, the quality of a good manager. No, That should be the quality. Because why? The owners, the stockholders are already risk averse. Now, if you are also risk averse, you are, you, you, are, you, are, you are becoming redundant in the company because you are just, your attitude is just like the stockholders. So, I'm alone. Because uh, they need somebody who can multiply their wealth, something like that. A risk neutral manager would choose a risky action over a sure thing, provided the expected profits of a risky project exceeded those of the sure thing. Okay? It will exceed the investment of the sure thing. And very importantly, a risk neutral manager has a very calculative attitude in terms of how uh, he will face the risk or if not avoid them. No? So that is the, somehow the, the very important point that should be emphasized there. Now, another is uncertainty of the firm again produces risk. Okay, if consumers search for stores charging low price uh, for search of, for low price of inputs, when there is uncertainty regarding the prices of inputs, optimizing for employment, optimal search strategies, uh, optimizing firm employ the optimal search strategy. You know, as manager of the firm. You also buy. You also become a a buyer of a what of a of an input. When you buy an input, of course you have you have to do some kind of optimal search. For a risk neutral manager, the optimal search strategy will be precisely the same as that of a risk neutral consumer. Okay. For a, again, for a risk neutral manager, the optimal search strategy will be precisely the same as that of a risk neutral managed consumer. So in other words, pareho rao graph. You have a reservation price and you have some kind of like uh, 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 reservation and a search price, search cost or something like that. Okay? The, the graph I previously presented to you. Okay? Now, illustrative problem on this respect. Okay? Illustrative problem. Uncertainty and the firm. In terms of uh, recruitment of worker. First is, suppose half of the workers in the labor market are willing to work for a salary of 40000 and half, half will also accept a salary of 30000 The manager spends three hours interviewing a given worker and values this time at 300 So, 300 per hour. The first worker of the, man, uh, the manager interviews, he will work only for... Uh, no, uh, he will work only for if he paid 40000 Should the firm manager make him an offer or interview another? Okay. So the search cost is 300 per hour. It will take about uh, three hours to interview a potential worker. Okay. And 50% of the time, this, the, the interviewees wanted to have a salary of 40%, 40000 and 50% of time also, there is there are workers who wants to work 38,000 pesos a month salary. So, nakasugod nag-interview. Okay, nakasugod nag-interview. You have spent three hours already. And what? You have uh, you have known that this worker will not work for 38,000. Instead, 40,000 yun ang gusto. The question is, are you going to interview another now that you have been... You have spent three hours already interviewing one applicant. On your forty thousand, give him gusto. Should the firm manager make him an offer or interview the another worker? It depends. We have to, you know, 
chunk the problem into uh, manageable or manageable or understandable uh, pieces. Okay. The problem has a search cost of 300 per hour. Okay. If the manager searches for another worker, half of the time she will or yeah, he will or she will find one willing to work 38,000 and thus will save 2,000. Okay. Thus he will save 2,000. Why? The difference between 40 and 38, he will save 2,000. But half of time, the manager will find a worker just like one she choose not to hire. And the effort will have been for nothing. Okay? Thus, the expected benefit of interviewing another worker is you have 2,000, kung mudawat siya 38,000, or zero. In other words, ang expected value of interviewing another, okay? The expected value of interviewing another is 1,000. So, on expected value, huh? expected value, or expected benefit. Okay? Expected benefit. Now, remember, what is the search cost? Kung ang imong expected benefit, taas pa kontra sa imong search cost, what will you do? Okay, what will you do? Obviously, according to the graph, if your expected benefit is still higher, go and search for another. Uh, no. So, you have to know that since 1,000 is greater than the search cost of 300, okay, okay, search cost of 300 or even 900, the manager should not hire the worker, but instead search for another worker. Obviously, that should be the, the case. Obviously, that should be the case. So that is, the worker must instead search for another, to another, because 50-50 ang chance. Okay? It could be a different thing Kung the percent, the proportion of the workers willing to work at 38 or 40 is uh, garbled or like uh, uh, changed in terms of proportion. But this is a 50-50 chance. So, pag interview ni another, randomly selecting another another worker. Now, 38,000 ay yung ano, di naka-save ka. O 2,000, no? So, that is, ano, that is the, the logic there. The final answer is interview another one. Because what pa masagad ang imo expected benefit. Ang theory niya, or ang, ang note niya, we have to make a decision at the margin. That means to say, ngad to kutub, maurot ng imong 1,000. It should be greater than or equal to the reservation price or the expected benefit. Okay? That is how to make decision in that Say, for example, uncertainty of the firm in buying inputs. Okay. Another is uncertainty and the firm for profit maximization. Katugan niya, buying inputs mo ni profit maximization. A risk-neutral manager must determine what what, out, what output to produce before she, she is certain. This means that to maximize expected profit, the manager should equate expected marginal revenue with expected marginal cost, okay? Under uncertainty, okay? Under uncertainty, what happens? Yeah, risk neutral manager, under uncertain condition, the expected revenue or expected marginal revenue must be equated to marginal cost, okay? The expected marginal revenue must be equated to marginal cost. You might ask this question. Nanong ang marginal revenue ra may gibutangan o mathematical expectation? Nanong ang MC wala man? Bidaw. Uh, think about it. Think about it. Why do you think it's only MR that is with mathematical expectation of certain value? But the MC is really, I know, it's not, it's not, uh, is not uh, we we did, we're not we did not obtain we're not, we're not going to compute for the expected value of cost. Okay, so think about it. You might just get that exactly correct during the exam. No, it has something to do with the uh, what? It has something to do with like the intertemporal, intertemporal nature of the 
variable. Okay, that's, that's why he, okay. Another thing is, if under pure competition and pure monopoly, when there is a ceteris paribus con condition, all things equal and information is transparent or something perfect information, MR is equals to MC, equals to P, equals to price, equals to demand. That's the condition. But this time, guys, this is already uncertain, imperfect market. So that is why we have mathematical expectation for that uh, particular. Uh, no. But take note, think it very constructively or logically. Why a marginal cost? Wala my mathematical expectation. Okay. Another is in here we see that when the price is risk neutral, when the when it, if we see that the when the when the manager is risk neutral, profit maximization under uncertain demand is very similar to profit maximization under certainty. Okay. MR is equals to MC. Only that the MR is expressed in expected value. Now, so anina, uncertainty of the uh, uncertainty and consumer behavior, uncertainty and the firm. Okay, Havana, in this particular module, we look at also uncertainty and the market. There are three different conditions in very important, very important to know in the in this information economics. One is, uh, why why do we have uncertainty? Why, why, why we always use the word uncertainty? Because with imperfect information, it will create uncertainty in among uh, to the consumers, uncertainty also to the uh, firm, and of course it will also create uncertainty in the market. These are the three different. And very importantly, as a business manager, we need to know how to deal or even manage this particular uh, risk situation or risky situation. Now, in uncertainty in the market, first is there is market failure or there is market asymmetry. Okay? The normal supply and demand condition equilibrium is no longer possible because this there is simply uh, uncertain or imperfect market. It could be the yeah, no, because of the, the because of the there are a lot of hidden costs in the market, meaning to say the the buyer the buyer will not really get the true price that is offered by the ano because the patong patong because of imperfection that hay mga rent seeking individuals like mga fixers mga uh, you know profiteers along the way or maura on the presyo na you know uh, people who are we call them the naga Laway ray puhunan, mukulikta ni hapon o kwan. Tong in the market. If there is perfect information, what is priced by the seller, that is the information that the buyer gets, then there is, um, there is a sell going to consume it. But since the market is imperfect, either structurally or informationally, then there is going to be a lot of transaction cost, or we call it hidden cost. The cost that is unnecessary, unnecess unnecessary, that will also affect both the, the demanders and the sellers. The first is that is market asymmetry. Now, asymmet the market asymmetry is a natural result when there is asymmetric information, meaning to say uh, imperfect or imbalance or what have you. Meaning to say what the what the seller knows. The buyer doesn't know exactly at all, or what the buyer what the buyer has in mind is not what the seller is actually doing. Okay, so that is very asymmetric information, a situation that exists when some people have a better information than others. Okay, Ma manipulate ka ba? Kaya Asymmetry of information between consumers and firm can affect firm profit, of course, no. Uh, very, very dangerous, no? Uh, 
especially for example you are uh, you are well, you are selling for example our experience a, a hunk of abaca fiber from the mountain okay now get the last of our mer sakay sa kapalhabal ngan kuan nga okay uh, asa maka asa maka nong antum sa lungsod balik ya abaka ko di balik ya mm-hmm. Onya, pila may presyo dito dong? Asam na ito ni Baligya. Ingon na tayo ang kuwan. Ang kanang na ay na ay, uh, na ay ang farmer. Ang very rent-seeking individual po. Ito na bang mapahimuslanon nga uh, individual or habal-habal driver. Kure bahala na mo nung. Sige, sakay. Ito na ni kuwan nga ito. Ito ni Baligya dito. Ah, nga ito. Sagan, pag-abot dito. Pag-kuwan. Pila may Pero may presyo ni. Ah. Uh, Kani mo na, may presyo. Ate. Yung may raman no, pero sige na lang. Mo mo dai presyo na karon. Dai pag lakaw sa mana ki bayra na ang katong buyer dito nga trader, ning hatag ko do kwarta dito sa balabal driver. Not knowing nga gi patungan dito gi kalta sa presyo. The driver has to receive for example 5 pesos per kilo or like 3 pesos per kilo. Nang nagdala ka o 300 kilos. Can you imagine? 300 kilos? 300 times 5. 1,500 ang yung na, na, na penalize ang farmer. 1,500. Kapi na daw nagtungasako ng 1,500. No? So, that is that is what is uh, existing. Very asymmetric because the farmer, the, the farmer does not know the information, the price information. Very asymmetric. The other one is enriched at the expense of another in asymmetric market information. It creates uncertainty. Okay. Now, asymmetric information okay, has, is going to create uncertainty. And there are examples that of an asymmetric information situation. One is a firm is selling a new product which is good, but the customers do not know the consumer. The customer will not buy of course okay baligya ka na maayo ning among produkto di ni mohurot di gamiton just joking no di maayo ning among produkto ligo ni tag dos pag sige kana ana sa yang 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 supply ko pag lubag lub kuan man na bali man di ligo ko na bali ko ni na bali na bali o tag piso na lang tag piso ay duha na man ka po can you imagine so very asymmetric Ma-manipulate ka sa sitwasyon, no? Customers do not know the cost to the, con- the consumers will not buy. Okay? Oh, di ko ana. Okay? Mining ang mga gamit ka ron. So, that is asymmetric. You need to address the risk-bearing tendency of the, ano, the customer. Now, there are three manifestations of asymmetric information. One is hidden characteristics or ability. What is hidden characteristic? Okay? Okay. Hidden characteristics is described in this manner. Things one party to a transaction knows but itself knows about itself but with but which are unknown, which are unknown by the other party. Okay? <clears throat> For example, mangutang ka. Katingin mong iutangan, how would you know? na good buyer or good 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 borrower ba niya or bad borrower mubayad ba kani okay mubayad ba kani or daily ang nangutang mo kay nakahibalo o good ba kani or bad borrower mo nang magsigig pangutang magsigig po ka <coughs> magsigig po ka man siya okay hidden characteristic or yeah that, that, some, something like that no so that is what we call as uh one manifestation of a kuan. For example, hidden characteristic, how would you be able to know nga makahibago ko sa karakteristik na nito kana? Kaya aron, ano, kanabitang na ay uh, what? Pag-apply pala niya ang loan, kaya balo na ka, I said, hindi mo bayad. So, hindi mo bayad or very poor payor ni. So, uh, it's disapproved na yun eh. You know what? I have experienced one. When I did my master's in Thailand, in Chiang Mai, I was doing a study about uh, credit, uh, 
uh, uh, saya sama saja. Dek, uh, farm, farm credit, farm credit, and uh, agricultural credit market, something like that. And then one very important, interesting re- uh, result. With there were three of us, three of us. So I, I concentrated on doing a, a doing a production function analysis of uh, uh, analyzing the liquidity of the uh, the borrower with respect to his propensity to, uh, to cheat or to 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 make a uh, his propensity to be uh, as a delinquent borrower. But there was one. Uh, companion of mine, another master of students, who really studied the likelihood that pag interview pa lang ni mo, may bala na ni mo nga, di ni mo bayar raining pa na ni, di li ni mo bayar raining mga barawar. Pag interview pa lang, pag ho mag interview, may bala na ng pangkop nga kining tawha na he, is, he has only about 60% chance na mo bayar ni Claro. Magsigira ni default may balo na dan interview why in that model gi ko ha dai gi ko dan bangko after saya study ano man he developed a, a discriminant function model discriminant function na discriminant it's, it's a statistical tool an econometric tool now obtaining both the asset structure the behavior the location all other characteristics of the borrower and then he developed a a, an econometric model using discriminant analysis and was able to like smoothly analyze the likelihood that the borrowers upon interview and upon knowing his characteristics both socioeconomics uh, geographic uh, household etc no mga kundi yang mga mga characteristics of the farmer now after giving those information the bank will know what is what are the chances of uh, this borrower becoming delinquent very powerful so interview pa lang dagat din maka oh taga kuha taga pasukan nya din maka nakapangutang sa una sa kuan sa kanang bangko kabayan ka kun na restructure man to kay nasakit ko or nagbabalay niya nya so pa apila mo idad to nya oman ana pa nya human kanang na ay uh, uh, unsa mo karon do you have what uh, mga oh, ah lain motor na mo inutang motor inutang pila mo pay kan mo motor oh, na. so interview lang and then how many are you in the family and, uh, and then uh, uh, how old are you something like that all those characteristics socio economic and other characteristics household characteristics then pala inter lain mo tangon Now, ni ka, lang mo tangon. Tangon na yung kong kakang dataw saan siya. Di di pwede na, o kwan. Kaya nagatubang ka sa monitor, ang siya nagatubang ni mo, di di, ang iba lang ka itong interview ay nga, murad 40% lang nga, di, nga, ang, ang kwan na ni nga, the likelihood, the, the, the delinquency probability ani is really 60%. So, ang interview ay iyan ang ikuan nga i-reduce na lang yung loan kaya ron makuan mo makamabayad ka na i-negotiate juga ka na di diyan pero high ang imong discriminant uh, ano uh, function anal uh, kanyang result meaning to say na may na ka ikat delinqu- delinquency index why problema kada ka approve ka pag submit sa board i-attach man tong result sa imong ano i-attach tong result sa imong katong uh, interview attach to nga to sa board or kisa yung credit committee nila, whatever. Pag ato nito, pag tanaw, oh, ano yung problema ang board? Okay. Approve, disapprove. Ano, ah, ano sila dito. Very powerful. Because there's a way, using econometric analysis, a way of deciphering your hidden characteristic. But how many of the hidden characteristics can be known in that fashion? Well, that is just an example. Na. It is not impossible, but it can also be done in some cases. Okay. Although, mo change po ito. Kaya na updating. Why? Economic condition will change. Uh, so, so, economic condition of people will also change. That's why every every uh, five years or every three years, gina update po ito model. Okay. Hidden, hidden characteristics. The other one is hidden action. Manifestations of asymmetric uh, information. 
Hidden action is action taken by one party in a relationship that cannot be observed by the other party. Okay? Well, we are already very familiar about with the cat is away, the mouse will play. Okay? As I have told you in the in I know in my previous lesson, uh, my my Singaporean friend who is uh, in who is tasked to manage the Stabilobos uh, plant in in Gison City, the problem was I know high absenteeism and high kanabang uh, tardiness and low I know low output uh, per person or per capita output in terms of the factory target. Okay, so that was the challenge. There was high uh, hidden action problem. The other one is like like uh, um, you are working for something else or somebody else, and then you what you uh, just cheat in the uh, using of time. If they, for example, uh, uh, you said uras ang humanon daily ang trabaho, something like that. No? These are some of the actions, okay? Hidden actions, hidden characteristics. A hidden characteristic, example, bisa ko, dili graduate, graduated sa college, mapakita yung diploma, nga yung graduate, uh, fake the eye, no? So how would you assert it? that that guy is really a graduate of that course, no? So it's a question of, kanina, it's a question of his ability. Now the other one is a question of effort this time. Okay. Now those general characteristics can be classified, okay, can be can be classified in terms of these two types of informational asymmetry. Kanina, manifestations to, hidden characteristics and hidden action. Karon, types of information asymmetry. One type of information asymmetry is adverse selection. Adverse selection is a situation where individuals have hidden characteristics, remember, hidden characteristics, and in which a selection process results in a pool of individuals with undesirable characteristics. Okay. Recruit ka driver na yung ban nga uh, reckless yung kaayo. Yeah, recruit ka. Yung malang kikuan nga kamao mo drive ka ka. So you have really, kung saan ba yung kuan ka ni? Na ba kay driver nga kanang naay kuan? Like, uh, for example, uh, kanang naay defensive driver or driving or offensive ka ayun driver po. No? These are, um, these are characteristics. How would you know that? All of them na may lisensya. Okay? How would you know that? Naamay sila lisensya tanan. If you base only on the, ano, on the license, well, they pass. Professional. Binayran lang itong uban. Ah, ano ba? No? So, this time, din na pwede niyang binayran. Why? But take me to exam. Even then, hidden characteristic can be, will, cannot be known Unless super psychological ang imag exam. Pero dili. I just renewed my license uh, last January. And the exam is plainly knowledge on traffic uh, uh, science and uh, decision making on traffic science. But nothing that will address your hidden characteristic in terms of reckless driver baka, unsi baka ka na ay offensive or defensive driver ka. Nothing of that sort. No? So that is... Uh, one maybe thing to explore for uh, getting a or taking a, a driver's license course or driver's license exam. So, example of adverse selection is license fee for drivers. Katong mga kaskasero, mahal to uglisensyad. Kanyang katong dili, maayong driver, barato, dili, pwede. Kinahanglan nga, did mahipal ang yun. How will you distinguish one from the other? In other words, the challenge, how will you tangibilize the intangibles in terms of hidden characteristics? So the, the one the, the first example of like using a discriminant function uh, is one way, but there are other, there are other tools. But then again, uh, it's 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 working, uh, but it's not a, uh, a fail safe or a, a fail proof tools, no? How will you distinguish one from the other? Bad drivers? Good drivers? I don't know. 
Nga dyan kay Baagi. Ang no? amigo na dawat sa buwan, delivery. Na may lisensya, professional pa. Okay? Dawat. Okay, start now. Start na siya. Pag atras pa lang, nabangga na na yun. Put ball right then and there. <laughs> so, that's that's something. No? Then, uh, uh, that's uh, that's hidden character. Another is moral hazard. Okay? Moral hazard, kanina, adverse election. The other one is moral hazard. Moral hazard is a situation where one party to a contract takes a hidden action, effort, that benefits him or her at the expense of another. Uh, like for example, nga nung naman kayo, inspector, alang track, bus, kanang mga passenger bus, ano, na may inspector, huno ka lang, na may inspection. Because what the hell? Ibulsa ang ubang plate, hindi, tikitan. Saan? Kama na, real man ha. So, random inspection, gina, random inspection. Kung wala pa on tayo asymmetry sa, kuan, asymmetric information, kay malo pa lang ka, na, why manikas, it is an expense. That is what we call as principal agent problem. No? Na inspector, mag-check ko na nikas baka or something like that. Na yung mga sahiro, why take it? Nagkikulik ka na ang plate or something like that. No? So, hiring a manager with fixed salary, that's also moral hazard. Fixed salary. Anang manager, uh, 8 to 5, manaas siya. Pero what? Gamay, ramay na masa. Nga naman, oh, Oras may gitapos, dili man ang ano. So in other words, this adverse election and moral hazard can be solved using economic instrument. Mga nangangubad, okay, para magkugi ang manager kay hidden ability man eh, di man eh, karakteristik, hidden ability. Kaya bang, ang anong, kugi ta, o di ta magkugi, pareho rin magsuwilto. So, birahan ni mong economic instrument, economic incentive. Okay, for if you go, if you reach this quota and then gamay ray reject then for every ano na kay this much kay ay magkugi wala mag supervise something like that currental insurance the same thing currental insurance how would you know na kaning ano uh, driver ra ni morenta sa imong sakyanan basig ibangga ra ni ini ano aw mangayo nag deposit Deposit, money in renta, mapunyag deposit, like uh, 2,500 deposit, or maybe whatever, depending sa distance. Nya, katong deposit, pag garahi di mo, unya, why, why, kwan, walay tatsa, walay damage ang sakyanan, ibalik na to. Pero nangang yung damage, charge to sa imong deposit. Okay? Ang uban nga ni, passport. Wow, I, I, I've done that in in Thailand, no, in, I was uh, visiting there, and then I have to rent a motorcycle, and uh, they they asked me about my passport so that makinaon sa makabayan yung ko kung pataka ako gamit sa motor. So, adverse election, hidden characteristics, moral hazard, hidden ability. The other one is signaling and screening. Okay, signaling and Signaling and screening is a problem in uh, making a common basis of measurement of quality. Okay? The things or situations that are inherently intangible, the challenge is how we can tangibilize the intangibles. Signaling. Good driver. Bad driver or borrower or whatever. So there is what we call as uh, ano, uh, the problem of what are the signs where bad driver or good driver ni siya. And it's a problem of making common basis of measurement. Okay? Common basis of measurement. Uh, sa interview pa lang, makibaw na ka. Okay? Sa interview pa lang, makibaw na ka, for example. Very basic. One of the interviews done at katong yung kung ingon sa inyo nga stabilo boss. One of the interviews ingon siya nga uh, interview how, how from where from where and then what are your skills? Where did you graduate or something like that? And then very quickly, do you smoke? Ah yes sir, I, 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 I smoke a little. How many sticks can you consume? A day. 
many sticks? Mm, maybe uh, in one day, so maybe mga 15 or 20 sticks of cigarettes. Ah, okay. That, that is the only thing. That, that's the only information that uh, no, uh, the interview will get. And there is corresponding credit to that. What, what is that to the interviewer? There is a scientific basis that for every stick of cigarette smoked by anybody, an average of 15 minutes will be consumed. No? An average of 15 sticks, uh, 15 minutes will be consumed. Average, huh? it could be shorter, it could be greater than 15 minutes. In a hinayon ba? Nahurot ang 15 minutes. Okay? 15 sticks ko na yung mga one on average. That means 15 times 15, can you imagine? 225. Or 200, uh, how many minutes? Oh, uh, something like 100, almost 200? Almost 200 minutes a day. So that's roughly equals to maybe 3 hours. Ang masayang sa trabaho because of smoking. Na ay scientific ano na, uh, data. So, nung na nagkalay mahunot niya sa gerilyo sa kaadlaw, and then the, the, that will only give a wrong signal of his being able to be finally hired in the, ano, in the, in the, in the company. Okay? So, the challenge is how we can tangibilize. In other situations, there is also what? There is also what we call as a third party accreditation in order to see whether this guy really, in fact, possesses the necessary ability or characteristic desired for a particular job. That is why we already uh, have this, uh, for example, if you are a carpenter, if you are a welder, if you are whatever skills you have, there is always what you call as NC2, NC3, or what NC you have. Why? Because the NC is a trusted indicator that the, uh, no, the NC, national competitive uh, competency, national competency, is a trusted indicator that you, in fact, have the right skills for the job. Okay? So, it's one. So, there are other. Is signaling and screening is still a problem in many of the and not situations in the workplace. It's a challenge for manager. So remember, you have adverse election, you have moral hazard, okay? So you have to deal with that particular situation. The other is signaling. How will you know that this guy, in fact, is telling the truth or something like that? So licensing is one solution to that, but there are others. That uh, There are situations that licensing is not enough. Maybe passing the, uh, no, the, the certain exam or something. No? So that's why it's, uh, no, it's uh, very important. No? So in that, case, in that case, we have a situation that, that really sums up the, the, uh, no, the condition of market asymmetry, uncertainty and the, uh, no, uncertainty and the market. Now remember, uncertainty in, in the market, the uncertainty here creates, as, uh, is caused, no, the uncertainty is caused by imperfect information. Okay? There or asymmetric information in the market. No? Again, the uncertainty is caused by imperfect information existing in the market. That's why with imperfect information, it can either uh, you can either uh, see problems related to uh, like uh, adverse election, related to moral hazard, or related to signaling and screening. Okay, so it could be any of those three types of asymmetry of information that can happen if there is you no know, uncertainty in the market. Okay. So this, these are things that we need to do as managers. No, as managers, we need to think about. We need to think how to address this and how to tangibilize the intangible, unfavorable characteristics and talents. 
no? Ingon kayong pasar o board, naapoy, naapoy ko ano, lisin siya. Pero fake di ay. How would you know na fake to? Now, there are indicators. I remember uh, one friend of mine uh, who uh, applied for a license in Japan, driver's license. And then he was surprised why his international driver's license got ano, got cancelled in Japan. Wala di honor in Japan. So, well, how come? Na international driver's license. So, when he asked a verification or validation of his driver's license in a uh, transportation office somewhere in Japan, it was known that, well, this is the experience during that time. I'm not sure this time also. It was known that that license was taken from a blacklisted location of the LTO in Manila. Blacklisted as Japan. I just have to, I just have to mention the name of the, the district office in Manila. But I think they, they, they must have improved it this time already because it's standardized. Naman. It was the dist- LTO district office in Tayuman. No, Tayuman in Manila. Now, Tayuman noted kayo to, one of the blacklisted stations in Manila that is already nakadatabase na dito sa Japan. Makita, nag-license, nakikuha dito sa Tayuman. Pag-search nila, uy, Tayuman manigi ka, nakancel na dito sa Japan. So, I need to make a long story short. He will take it as an exam. And he paid a lot. He took the exam for driver's exam in driver's license exam in Japan. According to him, very, very strict. Paglingkod pa lang sa link ka lang kuan sa paglingkod pa lang ni Montes driver seat. Mag X X na tong it's fun examiner. Paglingkod ni ay to chicken ka or X ka na war biting tingog. Pag magno pa kuman sa exam, you failed. Come back next time. What the hell? It took him three times. It took him three times before he finally passed. So, and then with, with the seminar, of course. Very strict. Wala may lang ilagay dito. So, it's one thing na makita po. You have to deal with these particular situations in the market. As future managers, or maybe you are already managing a certain line of work in your in your company. Now, these are the things that you need to, uh, to face. Okay? So with that note, thank you for your attention. And I would like to say that after this, uh, after this uh, session, I will upload this in our Moodle classroom. And I will also upload the full text, the full text of module seven. And I said, read module seven, and I'm going to give you a, a bonus question in module seven, um, module seven. The exam is the exam next week. Remember, next week, next Saturday. The exam next week will be from module one, module five and six with bonus with a one bonus question from module seven. Okay? Uh, don't worry. I'm not going to deviate very far, very, very far from the materials given in module seven. Anyway, the question is bonus. You you may or may not answer the question. Okay, guys? Thank you and have a good day.